Hello everyone, my name is Virginia Briggs. I'm a partner at Minter Ellison and I lead our infrastructure, construction and property line of business. I've been asked to talk to you today following an article in the AFR a couple of weeks ago where I raised some concerns about women returning to the office in a post-COVID world and how we need to make sure this doesn't disadvantage women. So here are my thoughts. Firstly, can I emphasise that there are a lot of great men out there who shoulder their fair share of parenting and other caring responsibilities. They are terrific. But for the moment, I think that women still do the majority of heavy lifting in terms of caring responsibilities and domestic duties. So COVID is both a crisis and a catalyst. And just like the virus itself, the challenges and opportunities for people and how we work are continuing to evolve. Certainly in our organisation, and I suspect many others, initially the COVID pivot to everyone working remotely was a great catalyst. Um, it accelerated a cultural shift to agile and remote working that we, we in our organisation have been trying to make for ages. But we were having problems making agile working mainstream because many of our leaders were still stuck in the past and viewed remote agile work, often solely as part-time work, and certainly primarily as the domain of parents or carers and therefore mainly women. But thanks to COVID, we now have all the evidence we need to bust this myth and a few others. So myths like some types of work can't be delivered in any way other than the old fashioned 24 seven face to face, and certainly in law firms, the horrible myth of presenteeism. We had data pretty early on that most of our people believed they were equally or more productive working from home and that our technology really helped our teams collaborate between themselves and with our clients. Then the conversation moved to locking in the gains because we're all a little bit frightened that the transition back to the new normal might mean all the great wins of COVID around trust and this new level playing field might be lost and we really wanted to keep these gains. But then I saw some new patterns emerging and started to worry that all those glittery things might not in fact be gold and that what looked like a great thing for women with caring responsibilities might actually leave them with an even bigger load, a bigger expectation that now they could work from home over extended periods, we'd see their domestic loads ramp up and this would coincide with the blurring of the boundaries between work and home. 24-7 then begins to take on a whole new meaning and women, I think, are more likely to be the ones who get caught in the middle. So maybe actually coming back into the office might be harder for women with caring responsibilities. And if this is the case, what might the ramifications be for women's careers in the medium and the long term? To put it bluntly, certainly in our case, um, more than 70% of our partners are men. And I'm worried that as people start to return to the office, senior men will return more frequently than senior women. And they'll give the best work involving the best clients to the people physically in front of them, who will also largely happen to be men. And what's going to happen to women's careers as a result. But having said that, I'm a lawyer, so I like evidence. And I decided that I needed to get some data to work out if I actually had something to worry about. Across our firm, uh, different offices are progressing faster than others in return to the office based on their local context. And our data, which we get from um, online access forms and swipe cards, soon told me that actually I was right to be worried. At a junior level, the numbers coming back into the office between men and women are pretty even. But when you get to more senior levels where people are more likely to have caring responsibilities, there are definitely more men coming back to the office than women. And certainly at partner level, more men coming into the office than women. So where to from here? Well, a few things. Firstly, I think we need to keep a constant eye on the data. Then we need to equip our partners and our leaders and all of our people to be alert to both the opportunities and the challenges of longer term remote or agile working. We also need to facilitate some really good quality conversations so people are aware of the hidden costs of remote and agile working if it's not thoughtfully managed. We need to make sure that people are making purposeful and equitable decisions around work allocation so that all of our team members have the same opportunity to grow and develop. We need to educate people that the incidental learning and networking available in the office is incredibly valuable. 
And we need to make sure that we are purposeful in our profile raising and client facing work to make sure the right people are put forward, not just the ones who happen to be physically in the office on a particular day. If we can achieve this, we'll see more diverse models of leadership flourish, more truly inclusive environments, and through this, we will nurture collaboration and innovation. The alternative scenario where our female ta talent is being disadvantaged in an out of sight, out of mind way just isn't an option because we all need our very best and brightest engaged and energised to bring our organisations and our economy through what could be the greatest challenge of the 21st century so far. Thank you for listening.